Today I'm taking a look at polishing a guitar finish to restore that glossy shine you see on a new guitar. Now I'm not talking about fixing deep cuts and dings, but cleaning up the typical fine scratches you get from day to day use. My test sample will be this late 70s Takamine Acoustic. It has its fair share of battle scars, some of which are obviously not going to come out from polishing, but I'm hoping to clean up most of it. I've tried instrument polishes before, which certainly add a little shine, but don't seem to cut aggressively enough to get out more than the lightest scratches. So today I'm going to try something a little different. These are a set of inexpensive polishing products from Turtle Wax. They're intended for use on auto finishes. These are just what I could find in the store. But there are others out there too, like Meguiar's and Mother's, that should be comparable. Importantly, these are silicon free. You don't want silicon in your polishing compounds because it will prevent future finish repairs. Nothing sticks to silicon, not even silicon. There are three different compounds here, each with different cutting properties. Just like with sandpaper, you start with the rougher grits and then progressively move to finer grits to remove the scratches from the previous. But unlike sandpaper, these polishing compounds contain lubricating oils, which make it relatively easy to work with. Now the turtle wax rubbing compound is the most aggressive and we'll start with that to get out the worst of it. But careful not to overdo it because you don't want to cut all the way through the finish. Then the polishing compound is a finer grit and will result in a high gloss finish. Lastly, the scratch and swirl remover is an ultra fine polishing compound which should result in a mirror like shine. Hopefully when we're done we'll have a nice glowing finish. There are a variety of materials you can use to apply the polished compounds. I'll be trying out paper towels, microfiber cloths, and microfiber polishing pads. I'll even try busting out my random orbit sander with the sponge and polishing pads and that should make things go a little bit quicker. We'll also need some painter's tape to protect the bridge and neck and anything else we don't want to affect, and then lots of paper towels to clean up. It's going to get messy. Let's get started. I'll prepare the guitar by first removing the strings. And while doing this, I should mention that this is the first time I've tried this experiment, and I'm not necessarily recommending this process for all guitars and finishes. I'm not sure you'll want to try this on your $3,000 custom shop special. That said, if you do want to try it, just be sure to do a small test on the back before doing the whole guitar. Now I'm using this blue painter's tape to cover up the areas that I won't be polishing. We want to avoid getting the polish on the rosewood of the bridge and the fretboard. Blue painter's tape is perfect because it is easily removed without leaving any tape residue. On an electric guitar, I'd entirely remove the bridge and pickups if possible. One more thing to note at the outset is that I have a thick blanket on the table so that I don't have to worry about damaging the guitar while I'm working. I'll start with the heaviest grit, the rubbing compound, and I'm going to try the microfiber pad first. You might be able to see in the reflection that I am wearing an apron. It's going to get messy, especially when I fire up the orbital sander. I started with just a few drops of the rubbing compound. I wasn't sure how much it was going to spread and how much the pad would absorb. At first, I was using relatively light circular motions, but quickly realized that it was going to take some elbow grease. I'm going to need to speed up some of the video, too. Turns out it was a bit dry, and I did need a few more drops of the polishing compound to finish the back. After polishing for a couple minutes, I used some fresh paper towels to wipe the surface clean. This is the first chance to see how we're doing, and I could tell that I needed to go back and hit a couple spots a little more aggressively. So I came back with the microfiber pad and a few more drops of the rubbing compound, but it didn't seem to be cutting as much as I'd hoped. So I decided to give the paper towel a shot instead. Now you can see I'm digging in with a fair amount of pressure, and I ended up just going over the entire back again. And I think this might actually work better than the microfiber pad, and hey, it's cheaper too. Then one more pass with a clean paper towel to wipe off any residue before moving on to the sides. Now you can see that I've bailed on the microfiber pads and I'm just sticking with the paper towels. I change to a new towel every couple minutes as it seems to lose its tooth a bit when it's saturated. This camera angle was a bit challenging, but I ended up sitting the guitar on its side so I could exert more downward pressure. Now, time to work on the top. Something I realized later, I really should have stuffed a towel in the sound hole. It wasn't until the following day that I noticed lots of little white specks had dried on the inside of the guitar. They came off easily enough, but it was a pain and could easily have been avoided. Okay, time to level up to the next grit. This is the polishing compound. And I should have mentioned earlier that you should shake the stuff well before using it. Now make sure all the previous compound is cleaned off and there's nothing else on the surface that will scratch the guitar. And this time I'm going to try using my Bosch Orbital Sander with the sponge applicator pad. 
Turns out I should have applied some of the compound directly onto the pad because it started off a little dry and I ended up having to switch off the sander for a minute to spread the compound around. I found it difficult to get the right amount. Not enough and it's too dry, and too much is really wet and messy. I actually had to turn off the camera for a minute here because I realized it was spraying everywhere. So this is what it looks like after finishing a round of polishing with the sander. You can see a nice even coverage. Once I got going, it worked really well. Now I'm just wiping off the excess with a clean paper towel before moving on to the next section. Now for the top, I tried using more of the polishing compound and spreading it around first with a paper towel. This method definitely worked better with the sander, and I was able to keep the camera running this time. An orbital sander continually varies its pattern to avoid leaving obvious swirl marks, but it can be pretty aggressive, so you need to be careful, especially with the heavier grits. I chose not to use the sander in the first step with the rubbing compound, but you may find it works okay for you if you're working on an old beater guitar or one with a really thick finish. Anyway, it shouldn't be as much of an issue with these finer grit compounds. Now when using the orbital sander, just keep moving, slow and steady. Try to avoid using too much pressure or staying too long in one spot, and make sure you get good coverage. Now you can see it's a bit tricky when working around the bridge and sound hole, and it was on the sides too. But it's so much faster than working by hand, and you get a really nice even result. Now it's time to work on the final polish. I'm switching from the sponge applicator pad to a clean buffing pad on the orbital sander and I'll be using this scratch and swirl remover, again making sure to shake it well. I spread some of the compound on the surface using a paper towel, and then go to work buffing with the orbital sander. Now this is the finest grit compound, so you're not in too much danger of damaging the finish, but still keep moving slow and steady as before, and after buffing the sides and the top, we're nearly done. Time to take off that blue painter's tape, and you can see that there's a bit of compound residue around the edges of the bridge and the fretboard. I'm just going to get in there with a paper towel, and actually I came back later with a q-tip and a toothpick to get the rest of it. Lastly, I'm going to take this clean microfiber cloth and give the guitar a final buff by hand. And as you can see, after a few minutes of buffing, I'm getting a really nice shine. A lot of reflections here. I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. So I think those turtle wax compounds did a pretty nice job. There's a nice gloss on here, and if you look at the before and after pictures, it's pretty clear that it cleaned it up really nicely. I also used the turtle wax compounds on soft plastic like the pick guard and on the screen of my floor modeler, and both of those cleaned up really nicely too. So give it a try. I hope this has been helpful, and thanks a lot for watching. For more information on this and other projects, visit my blog at planetz.com and at Facebook slash John Planet Z.